Hello, and welcome back to another episode recap where I'll lay out five things that I learned from my conversation with a historical expert. Today, we are recapping the conversation that I had with Chris Wimmer about the historical accuracy of the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Whew, that's a long name for a movie. <laughs> Since you're subscribed to my channel, I mean, you are, right? <laughs> you might be familiar with Chris. We've had him on the podcast a couple times before to chat about the historical accuracy of Tombstone as well as Young Guns. Chris is the host and producer of two great podcasts, Legends of the Old West and Infamous America. You can find my full interview with Chris right here on the Based on a True Story channel. Or if you'd prefer a quick recap, well, that is the purpose of this video, where I'll pick out five key things that I learned about the historical accuracy of the movie with one of the longest names ever, the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. So let's get started. Number one, Frank's departure from the gang. The movie shows the blue cut train robbery as the last for the James gang. Chris told me that even though that is true because the timeline of the movie starts with the blue cut robbery, it doesn't really factor in that Frank James had already wanted to leave the gang after a robbery that ended with a massive shootout in Northfield, Minnesota. After that, in the shootout in Minnesota, Frank decided he wanted to give up a life of crime. Jesse ends up going back to a life of crime, though, and Frank gets sucked back in to do one last job, the blue cut train robbery. But then, after that, Frank does leave the gang for good, like the movie shows. Number two. The Jim Cummins plot. One difference between the movie and the true story was how the film handled the whole thing around Jim Cummins. The movie suggests that he and Ed Miller were trying to turn Jesse James in for the reward money. Chris pointed out to me that while there are some bits of truth in that, the key difference there is that all of that happened about a year before the timeline of the movie even begins. Chris relayed the story in more detail in the full interview, but basically, Jim Cummins suspected Jesse James of killing Ed Miller. So, he, being Cummins, went on the run. Number three, Jesse's paranoia. The movie suggests that toward the end of his life, Jesse James grew increasingly paranoid. For example, with the whole Jim Cummins plot that we talked about a moment ago. Chris told me that it is true that Jesse James started to get paranoid. Basically, here and there, members of his gang were caught, and some of them started talking to the police, naming names and such. The key thing to keep in mind, though, is that, and something we touched on earlier, the timeline. Chris pointed out that the way the movie compresses the timeline of events really heightens Jesse's paranoia on screen up until the climax at the point of the assassination. So, while the paranoia was real, Chris explained that at the point of the assassination, it's not likely that Jesse James was any more or less paranoid than he was at any given time up until then. It's just the movie had to squish things into a couple hours. And in real life, the paranoia was a much slower growth over a matter of years. Number four, the assassination. There are two key things that stuck out to me about the historical accuracy of how the movie depicts the assassination itself. First, the way it happened. Chris told me that the way we see it happen in the movie is pretty accurate to how it really happened, with one big caveat, and that is the second thing. There were only three people in the room when it happened. There was Charlie Ford, Robert Ford, and Jesse James. Of course, Jesse James did not survive. So to say the movie is accurate to how it really happened is really to say the movie is accurate to how Charlie and Robert Ford claimed it really happened. Can we trust the word of the brothers who were involved in the assassination of Jesse James? I guess that's the ultimate question for the story, huh? Number five, after the assassination. Chris explained to me that after the assassination, the movie is correct to show that Charlie and Robert toured a show where they reenacted the event. In fact, that's part of the reason how we know what happened in that living room, at least how it happened according to the Ford brothers. One hole to fill in from a historical perspective that we don't really see in the movie is what happened to Jesse James's wife, Z, and their children. Chris told me that after Jesse was assassinated, Z not only had to tell their children that their father was not Thomas Howard, that's who they thought he was, they knew nothing about Jesse James, 
But she also had to sell all their possessions just to survive. The reason for that was because when Jesse James was killed, he was broke. He did not have a sort of nest egg stashed away for his family or anything like that. And that means when he was killed, his family was left destitute. That's all for today, and hopefully you enjoyed this episode recap of five things that I learned from Chris Wimmer about the historical accuracy of the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Now, my discussion with Chris was about an hour long, so there's obviously a lot more details and topics that we covered over there that I haven't had the chance to do in this recap video. So if you want to learn more about the historical accuracy of the movie, you can listen to that whole interview for free right now over at basedonatruestorypodcast.com slash 166. Once again, that's basedonatruestorypodcast.com slash 166. And don't forget that Chris has done a deep dive into Jesse James across an entire season of his podcast, Legends of the Old West. So I'd highly recommend checking that out if you want to go beyond just the events in the movie and learn more about the story of Jesse James overall. In the meantime, for more recaps and full-length episodes of Based on a True Story, hit that subscribe button right now. Thanks for watching.